Brick Maniacs, welcome back. I'm here at the designer's desk of Andrew Summers today. Yes, yes we are. And you have a long-awaited model. It's the S-Tank. Yeah, or the Stridswagen 103. Very I probably butchered that. I don't know. It sounded right to well, me. We'll probably get the hate in the comments, won't okay. we? It's okay. Um, let's get right into it. Um, history, man. So, Putting you on the spot. All right, so the, uh, the Stridswagen 103, we'll call it the S-Tank, or the Stank, as it's been called in the office here. <laughs> <laughs> Rather unflattering, but I mean, you get S and you get tank, so it makes tank. Um, so during the Cold War, Sweden needed a, a main battle tank because their position, I mean, as far as from what I've seen in research, they're a neutral country. Um, so during the Cold War, they were sandwiched in between the NATO powers and the non-NATO powers. And the worry was that the non-NATO powers would come trotting along the border with their tanks and whatnot, and well, you know, you obviously can't have that. So Sweden needed a tank design. And they came up with this turretless tank here. Yeah. You could say it's a self-propelled gun, but the role they intended it for made it a main battle tank. And the reason for the turretless design, as I've read, is that the country of Sweden is a very hill, very forested mm -hmm. place. And the intent was they wanted something that was so low profile that it could get into a hull down, dug in position, right. have its barrel go over a berm, and shoot at anything coming in. So a defensive ambush position. Um, and that's what a turretless tank is good for, a very low profile. You look at tanks with turrets on them, they're a lot larger. During the Cold War, our main battle tank was the M60, and that has a high profile when you compare it to Russian tanks, or especially this tank for that matter. Um, the S tank, it never really was put into combat, but from what I've read, apparently it did very well in mock trials. So they, they ran it against some you know, NATO tanks and Western tanks with turrets, and they found that the S tank was actually, actually a bit better, oddly enough. Interesting. I mean, given that terrain that they're in, so right. for sure. Right, especially the fighting terrain they were in, and they intended it to fight, and it did really well. Right. Um, at least it would have, but fortunately we didn't have to find out. <laughs> right. Um, you mentioned uh, digging in. This tank is, comes equipped with uh, some features yes. to do that. Yeah, its main party trick, party um, trick huh? is that it can go <laughs> It can assume the position, so it yes. can go down like that, or it can go up like that. So if you picture rolling up to a slight berm, right, it would do that, and then the suspension, hopefully you can see this, it would essentially level itself out. So it would put its butt up in the air, have the barrel stick right over the berm, and then that would allow it to just fire. And that's just an incredibly slim profile right. above right. that berm. So. And, you know, a very slim profile means there's less chance of being hit, and it also means that if you are hit, um, there's a good chance it's going to be a glancing round, so mm -hmm. the round's just going to ricochet right off your armor. Um, and of, a, of course, sloped armor means added thickness, so right. a lot of the design was intended to be very well protected. And that's just like a giant slope on the front of that oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was fun coming yeah. up with. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the crazy suspension on that, obviously, uh, yeah. as you pointed out. No, it was it was the, the full deployment of the model. I mm -hmm. mean, designing it from the ground up, it was, how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at diagrams for the actual, you know, 103 and saw how they did it and everything and figured what was the best way I could come up with right. this. And it's a very, it's actually a very simple system yeah, it's cool. when you look at it. But, it, I mean, it looks more complex than it actually is. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I mean, onto the build. Um, obviously, you have that suspension, um, and it balances at either uh, at pretty much any position that you put it put that in, right? Yeah. You can demonstrate that. Pretty much. I mean, you can adjust it to here. Yeah. Or here. Oh. Or here. Anywhere else? No, that's cool. I mean, you can go down there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what else do you want to talk about on this build? Well, um, I can talk about the fact that it's missing an antenna. Uh oh. <laughs> Dang. Here we go. Luckily, you have an antenna. I have on a hand. spare. You know, see, that's what happens when you start get, over. Start just kidding. Got, <laughs> okay, fine, fine. No, but that's that's what happens when you have a lot of parts that you can do replacements right on the spot. Right on the spot. But yeah, um, coming up with the Spin angles. Spin this baby around. Yeah, how do I do that? Um, coming up with the angles. That was a real, real difficult process sure. because. Of course, we go off of blueprints, 1 35th scale blueprints. And the whole time you're building it, you got to compare it to the blueprints. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but it's a, it's a process of just constant back and forth. Um, and this one, very low profile. Right. You know, and getting that angle is very difficult because you're working with a ton of slopes and you're trying to figure out, you know, how do I get these slopes to fit together? The thing I'm most proud of in the build is I think this transition. Yeah, right I was going to point that out actually. So you know that was one of those transitions where I had a part I figured, 
we'll see if this works. Mm -hmm. You know, and apparently it, it does. You know, the angle was, was so good sure. on it and decided to roll with it for the rest of the tank. Um, but yeah, and... And I suppose, I mean, building the Hetzer was maybe a little bit of a warm-up for that. A bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a squished Hetzer. I've right? been pigeonholed into turretless designs. <laughs> Put me out, please. Yes. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, you, got, you got the main gun on there. Um, I suppose the, the, the tank itself does most of the elevation... Um, yeah, yeah. The the suspension on the real one is hydraulically activated, right. so they roll up to a berm and they automatically level itself out. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do that. You can build your own berm. You could roll your tank up right. there and have your pretend battles. And you have a RPG screen on the front. Yes. Or what's the official yeah. term for that? I don't know. It's an RPG slat. Slat. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of modern vehicles have yeah. that. If you look at a lot of our vehicles that were rolling in Iraq and Afghanistan. Right. Um, if you see a large cage around it, that's an RPG slat. Right. If you don't know what it's intended for, um, it breaks up an incoming round. Right. So a round would go, woo, bang, blow up the slat armor, but leave the tank or armor vehicle intact. Pretty clever. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I, was, I was reading about this tank, and, and that was one of a, uh, it kept that feature really under wraps for the first yeah. little while, which was interesting. So this is one of the earlier models where they actually employed that, that I'm aware so, of. Well, actually, that you mentioned it, yeah. um, this model is based off of a 103, a Stradivarius 103C. Um, in the C model, it had a lot of, I mean, <clears throat> a lot of improvements throughout the lifespan of it. Um, the early ones that didn't have these boxes in the back, um, these are actually water canisters. I was surprised. I thought they were reactive armor, but they're water canisters. Just some water. So earlier models didn't have that. I think they had it with the, the B, C, and those models, but. Yeah, this is a 103C variant. Cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun model to play around with. Max move and everything. And nice. Fun nice. features. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that, that's the uh, that's the S tank. Right? Anything else yeah. that you want to talk about on this? Do you want to talk about your minifigure? I guess we can talk about the minifigure. Yeah, I guess. Pop him out I of guess. There. Cool. Um, all right. So this is, I guess, a tanker from that era. Um, it's that Cold War era. A very simple. Um, jumpsuit that they'd be wearing and then the, a little bit of a jacket over that with some uh, with shoulder collars you, you send a nice reference image from a museum that you found yeah uh, which is cool um, yeah, there's that radio uh, hanging over the uh, around the neck um, and then as you can see uh, it's got this kind of olive drab uh, tinting that I applied to this minifigure yeah, really fascinating I yeah I've been, I've been playing around a lot with with tinting of minifigures and it's 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 not just like blasting it with a with a color on top of the minifigure it's actually working with that base layer um, that dark gray um, base layer to come up with a uh, um, a nice olive color so there's there's yeah, yeah so I'm playing around with that it's fun because all the figure parts are not right and well, so they're not plentiful and I mean if you look at I mean, you got some Lego olive right here Yep. Um, on this guy, it's like Lego Olive is like really, really vibrant, um, and I, I don't, I don't think it really represents actual military olive drab very well. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some countries have something that, that that's that incredibly vibrant, but um, I just think you know we can by color mixing you can get a little bit closer to actual olive. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's been fun. Um, yeah, simple figure, um, 360 printed, underarm printing. Um, it's kind of fun making the, like there's not a ton of equipment on on the on tankers usually, um, just because you know they're inside of a vehicle and they got to move around a lot. So if they right. have extra pouches, stuff gets hooked on. So they keep their uniforms fairly simple usually. Um, so it's kind of fun being able to really focus on just simple details and you know getting it just right. So a lot of fun. Well, you certainly did get it just right. Thank you very much. <laughs> you Thank are you. welcome. And your tank's cool too, Andrew. Awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> With that nice little yeah. moment, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna call it quits here. Last yeah. word, man. Um, face down, booty up. <laughs> face down. Okay. All right. That's the last <laughs> to word. Quote Pitbull. <laughs> to quote Pitbull. To quote Pitbull. That is the S tank designed by yep. Andrew Summers. For so. more information, please check out BrickMiniat.com. Yeah. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Face down, booty up. <laughs> In the song Timber. <laughs> Pitbull, Kesha.